Hey there guys, Paul here. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through some examples for the selection of a condensing unit for a commercial refrigeration application. Coming up, selecting a condensing unit, adding spare parts, generating a report, and generating a bill of materials. This video is part of a series where we'll be looking at a number of worked examples using the Cool Selector 2 application to help you select and calculate components for your refrigeration system. So do check out the other videos if you haven't already, links are in the video description below. We start the selection process for a condensing unit by selecting the Compressors and Condensing Units tab and then clicking the Condensing Units option. Before we can select a product, we first need to define the system. We start in the left hand panel by first selecting which region the unit will be installed in. In this example, we'll select Europe from the drop down menu. Then we can choose which application the condensing unit will be used for. It is important to consider and specify the application to return the best results and product suggestions. For this example, I'm going to leave this with all options selected. Next, we select which refrigerant we'll be using. For this example, we'll select R448A from the drop-down menu. We then need to specify the electricity supply. For this example, we'll select 50 Hz 415 volt three-phase supply and then click OK. We now have the option to select a product from various ranges. You can continue and see all matching products, but for this example, we'll choose the Optima Plus new generation and click OK to continue. We could then filter the products further by filtering by product version, model or code number. Next, we need to specify the operating conditions. We start with the cooling capacity. In this example, we require a cooling capacity of 9.8 kilowatts. For the evaporator, we specify a dew point temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. We then need to specify the superheat. Specifying useful superheat in the evaporator and additional superheat between the evaporator outlet and compressor inlet is important for the correct selection and calculation of compressor and condensing units, especially if we have long section lines in the system. A higher useful superheat would reduce the mass flow rate in the evaporator slightly. However, total superheat is more important as a higher superheat at the end of the suction line when the gas enters the compressor results in a higher volumetric flow rate in the compressor and also a higher discharge temperature. We can specify the superheat by specifying useful superheat and the additional superheat or alternatively, if we have short section lines in the system, we can simply select the return gas temperature. We'll then input a useful superheat of 8 Kelvin and then an additional superheat of 4 Kelvin. For the condensation, we'll specify an ambient temperature of 32 degrees Celsius and 1 Kelvin for the subcooling. We also have the option to specify a rating condition with various options in the drop down menu. For this example, we'll leave this as default. The application now lists all the condensing units which are applicable to our system criteria. We can show or hide information from the table by right clicking on the table headers and clicking manage columns. Additionally, we can also export the information from the table by right clicking on the table cells and selecting export to Excel. You will see some products listed with red text. This is to warn us that the product falls out of the match tolerance. If we scroll to the right hand side, we can see the percent match for the requested capacity in the rightmost column. If we hover our mouse over the red match cells, we can view a brief description of the issue. If we select a product with red text, a warning message will appear above the table. The match tolerance is defaulted to plus or minus 10% of the capacity. This can be altered in preferences if required. We've covered how to do that in our previous video on preferences. Do check that out. Links are in the video description below. You will notice that some products are highlighted with a green row. This is the suggested product. The suggested product is based on how closely it matches the operating conditions. This product is only a suggestion and you should make an informed decision on whether this product is applicable to your system by reviewing the performance data. You can view the performance data for any product in the lowest segment of the window. Under the performance tab, we can find performance graphs for cooling capacity, power consumption, current and COP. We can view this information in a table format using the radio buttons just above the graph. We can then export the data by right-clicking on the graph cells and selecting Export to Excel. Under the Envelope tab, we have an interactive graph which represents the limitations of the unit. The green dot represents the compressor's position within the operating envelope according to the operating conditions defined earlier. We can see the green dot will move if we change the values for the temperature for the evaporator or condenser. 
Underneath the envelope, we have a legend which provides valuable information such as temperatures, cooling capacity and power consumption. As we move our mouse on the screen, we can see the value changing, representing changes to the condensing and evaporating temperatures. If the green dot appears near, on or outside the limitations, then you should reconsider your application selection. Under the Performance Details tab, we can find the thermodynamic data, system schematics, as well as a pressure enthalpy chart. Under the Information tab, we can find information on spares, dimensions, electrical specifications, mechanical connections, and technical data. If we head to the Spares sub-tab, we can scroll through a list and find the spare parts and code numbers. We can also add these to our report and bill of materials by clicking the Add to Report button on the right. Based on the region and specific condensing units, some additional data might be available regarding the compliance of the unit with different standards. In this example, the condensing unit is compliant with Eco Design Directive, and you can see the calculation results and all the relevant information for the Eco Design Directive under the Eco Design tab. We can generate a report for our selected products simply by clicking the Report button in the top menu bar. The window will then refresh to display our product report. In the left hand panel, under Items to include in the report, we can add or remove information from our report by clicking the plus button and then selecting or unselecting the items. If you make a change here, simply click the update button at the top to apply these changes. Additionally, we have the option to add a project name, some comments, as well as an author name to the report using the inputs on the top left hand panel. Again, if you make a change here, then simply click the update button to apply these. Along the top of the report, we also have various options to export the report. We can generate a bill of materials which can be provided to a Danfoss supplier to obtain a quotation by clicking the bill of materials button in the top menu bar. Here the product quantity, product description and code numbers will be displayed. In the left hand panel we also have the option to add a project name, some comments as well as an author name by using the inputs. If you make a change here just click the update button to apply this. Along the top of the bill of materials we also have a number of buttons to export the bill of materials. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this and it has helped you. If so, then please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any questions at all, let us know in the comment section down below. You can find links to more Cool Selector 2 tutorials in the video description. Do check those out. And once again, thanks for watching.